And uh, they don't like to be corrected. But the truth is, all of us, we need to be corrected. Maybe sometimes the way we correct others may not be good. But when somebody come up and want to correct you, it's good. Earlier on, we remember when Moses, um, his in-law Jethro, father Jethro, the father of Zipporah, he came to him and advised him because at first Moses was busy working on his own. But he told him what you are doing, it is not good for you and for these people. But it's good you appoint people that will help you to do this work. So he picked the correction and work became easy. So we can take that as an example. When we want to help our brother we have seen went wrong, let us find the right way to approach them so that they don't get offended. Even if they get offended, I believe if it depends sometimes on the way we approach them, how we address the matter to them. But you agree with me, people like correcting people. They don't want to be corrected. And many of them, I have realized, people who correct people, they are living in a problem. They are living in... Uh, they are worse themselves. Just like you may find somebody telling you, correcting your children, but you find the person, children, are in trouble. And also it happened, most of the people who advise people about marriage, themselves, their marriage is in trouble. <laughs> so this is how Satan does. People, people who talk about relation, themselves, themselves, they are having problem in relationship. So, even if you hear somebody advising you, and you realize you have a mistake, start praying for him or her, then try to find a way to talk to him. You may find that many a times, most especially, people who stand in front, it's very difficult for people to come and advise them. Because people say, ah, what will he say? What will he think? No, no, no. Please, if you, that God has put that in your heart to approach somebody, please approach and help them. So the Bible tells us that if we obey, God have reminded us that the earth and its fullness, it's all this, will become his treasure, peculiar treasure, something very important, very, let me say, very, I cannot, I will say priceless. So you know what that means. You are looking for marriage, happiness in your marriage, just obedience to God's word. Sometimes it seems to be very difficult at the beginning, but if you keep on, it will come. This is what I do. I, when you focus on doing what God is telling you to do, sin problem will not be an issue. Do what God will need you. Read the Bible. Try to see you have time to read the Bible. Try to meditate over it. Try. Everything is about trying. Keep trying. Keep trying. Afterwards, it will become part of you. Don't worry about sin. But if you are there say, I don't want to sin, I don't want to sin, you will sin. I don't want to gossip, yeah? you will gossip. So don't waste your time there. We are human, but that is not an excuse. Good news is that, you know, we are, the spirit, we are spirit, learning to live in this physical body, which means we cannot be limited. So I'm here to say to us, yes, everybody has a weakness, but it's very important if you realize your weakness. You keep praying against your weakness and try to see you... Come out of that weakness. Don't say my hunger. No, don't call it your hunger. No. My mood. Don't call such. No. As you are praying against it, try to see that. Then God will come and bring the balance. We all know the story of Peter. When he said Jesus to Jesus, say, if you are my Lord, if you are the one, command me to come and walk on the sea, in the water. Then Jesus told him, come. Peter, what he did, I want you to do like Peter. Peter, he realized this, this is what he did. You know what? He stepped on the boat and started walking to come. The Bible says that he started walking on the water. But all of a sudden, Peter, he started drowning in water. Why? Because he saw the wind. But there is something I want you to see. When Peter cried, Jesus, Lord, help me, he did not cry while running back. 
He continued, which means genuine faith of Peter. So the same thing. You don't want to smoke. You pray against not smoking. Then you say, Amen. After that, what you have to do, don't go to a place where they are smoking. Don't go and buy a cigarette. You say you don't want to take alcohol. But your fridge is filled of alcohol. Of course, when you go there for water, what you'll ask, you'll drink alcohol. You don't want to drink alcohol. The friends you are surrounded with, when you sit like this, they say, brother, sister, can you take one? Of course, you will be tempted. We all know that this, you cannot put the oil, let me say the, in Kenya we have what we call Kimbo, that block oil cream. If you put near fire, it will melt. Or the ice, if you put it near where there is temperature, it will melt. So this is what we have to do. If you are praying, asking God to help you to overcome a particular habit, try to see that your attitude and your behavior, your attitude toward that thing, try to change. If I'm a person who likes gossiping, and I'm surrounded with people who gossip, which means I have to reduce the time and my, I spend with those people who gossip, so that I may not gossip. I thank God this is what God did for me. You know I keep chicken. Why? Now I don't have time to gossip because I will be looking at chicken. I talk to chicken. So by the time I talk to chicken, I will remember I say, oh, I need to pray for Irene. Then I'll pray. It helped me maybe the entire day I've spent without gossiping. You see how God did? So you also need to look for something that will help you not to gossip. <laughs> and this is what I do, by the way. If you come and tell me, Baba, you see Ibrahim, I see Irene. Yes, I say, uh -huh, what happened? Papa, Papa, after I say, okay, I say, thank you. Can you really tell me this when Irene is there? You say, ah, ah, ah. Then I wait. When I see Irene, I say, Irene, you know what? This sister must say this. Then I say, Mr. Masi, can you tell us when Irene is here? So there, next time, Masi or Irene, you will not bring story concern. You say, this Baba is too problem. It's not problem. We are just trying to kill the devil. Praise God. So let us help each other by being obedient. Because when the Bible tells us, I have realized, as I said earlier on, what we are looking for is in the Bible. But we can only get it when we obey. So I've realized problem in marriage it depends on our disobedience as individuals. You may say, wow, can come. Maybe you are a married woman. But in your house, you have some small change. The way you treat your husband is not written in the Bible. The way you treat your wife is not written in the Bible. Because the Bible tells us, husband, love your wife. So if you don't love your wife, it means you have not obeyed God's voice. Because these words is God's voice. Husband, love your wife. So if you don't love your wife, you love your, your somebody else, it means you did not obey. So problem come in the marriage. You say, wife, submit yourself to your husband. Then you, because you maybe you're working, you're having some money better than your husband. You come and talk. You are not, that is not the Bible, my sister. So let us obey. When we obey this, God has promised to make us high. So I will say this. Obey God's voice. And many of the people who don't like to obey, they like people to obey them. <laughs> human being. Sometimes I sit down and look at human being and say, now wow. Only God can handle you, man. Most of the things that you want people to do, let you also do for them. Just like when you want people to give you, also give. You want people to pray for you, also pray for them. You want people to forgive you, also forgive them. You are there, you don't want to forgive, but you want people to forgive you. And it matter was, you want God to forgive. You cannot forgive your brother. So Christianity has been made easy if we only obey. But we are making Christianity so difficult by not, by not acting on the word. We obey, I don't think we'll have sin problems. Sins, they will always be there, but we don't put our mind there. Praise God. If you agree with me. Me, I will tell you that that is the only way. Let us obey the word. I have realized, I say again, 
healing, deliverance, blessing, breakthrough. It is based on the ground of our obedience to God's word. Sometimes I sit down and I look and say, ah, last year I used to do this, do this. But when I look at the graph, I see there is a problem. Then I say, God, forgive me. Also, you can do the same. Praise God. Also, you can do the same. You look at the graph, you say, ah, I used to pray one hour, but now I can only pray five minutes. Why? Because maybe those days you used to pray, you did not have food on the table. But now there is food and plenty. Your praying graph have went down, which means there is a problem, sister or brother. So you try to look at you and say, I used to do this, I used to do this. When you see ah, it have went down, try to come back and it will help you. Those who have joined us, okay, they wrote on the chat box. Then I will say this to us. I do thank God because his promises are yes and amen. I will say this. Listen to what people say. And all the people answered together and said, All the Lord had spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the Lord, the people to, unto the Lord. This is what we do. Like, as like God is using me to say, everybody will say, yeah, we'll obey. But after you go home, you'll do your own thing. It may not please you, but this is what I have done, I have realized. You know, many of us, as we are seated there, I may spend hours and talking, talking, talking. But still, you will go and do what you want to do as a person. That is human being. I may spend time telling you what to do. But still, you will go and do what you like. Not only you. That is how human beings are. That's our nature. So here the Israelites, they told Moses that ah, well, everything that the Lord have told you, we'll do it. So I say, I believe that's what you are saying. But please, I beg you, for Christ's sake, if you want your life to change, in what you are experiencing as an individual, is your obedience. Obey. I tell you, when we obey, it's a sign to show respect and honor to God. You know, I have realized that why men, we do not obey God because we take things for granted. But the truth of matter is, I have realized that every time I take a step to obey a particular thing I've been told to do, there is a grace increase. And I see it brings me closer to God. So it's the same thing you do, my sister. What you are doing is not, too, it's not bad. But you can do, because better is not good enough. You can do the best is here to come. You can try to push on. Continue. Praise God. I know you are doing well. Listen. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I have come thee in thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee. And believe thee forever, Moses told the words of the Lord, the people unto the Lord. Okay. I do thank God that God always, God used this to let us know. We may not all see him in the thick cloud, as he did in the days of Moses and those. But this is enough evidence for us to know that our God speaks to men. Our God reveals himself to men. Our God shows himself to men. Get me correct. If anybody come and tell you I see God in my dream, I see God, run for your life. No one see God and live. Praise God. So, here in those days, God showed Moses himself to, before the children of Israel. Why? He did this so that people can believe Moses. That's why you see God does this to his servants. He, he made sure that healing, deliverance, and accuracy in declaration to come to pass so that people can believe in that particular servant that is standing before people 
in the name of the Lord. Because God used those things to make people know that, ah, indeed this man, this woman is of God. Because without such things we say, ah, people you know them, say, ah, what can he do? What is she doing? No, no, no. God always brings a sign to let people believe in his servant or in his woman, or in his, in his servants. So he did this, and which make us, that's why you see we believe God, we know, God can show up. Praise God. We see him every day in our daily friend, people, people around us, God reveal himself. Those who people are helping you, God is in their midst. He's the one pushing them to do that. Praise God. I know you may say, I want to see God. I remember may, maybe four or five years, or oh, I think three years, or four. I also used to say, I want to see God. I tell him, I want to see you so that I can believe you. I remember I was told I should prepare myself if I will see him. But what I saw in the sight, it made me say, I don't want to see again. Because the first time I remember, in my vision, what this is what happened. As I was waiting, I heard a voice saying, you that you carry offense, how can you see God? Because the day before, people, something happened and we had an argument. That's why you see many a times I tell you, please forgive your brother, forgive your Because once you sleep when you're having issue with one of your brother or your sister, I tell you, you'll miss your blessing. That's why I say, I always say to you, ah, you that you don't, you have issue with your brother. How can you pray? How can you read your Bible? It will not make sense. I thank God where I've reached now, I don't have issues. Even if something happened, I just look at you like this and I keep quiet. Why? I don't want God, Satan to use, to use somebody. I don't want to be, my life to be destroyed. So, that's what happened. But the next time again, I have to wait. Now when I was there, what I saw, I saw a light. But this light, I cannot describe it. But I shouted and said, I don't want to see. So I know no one can see God. But we thank God he used Jesus, in a, he appeared in, in his images. So I'll say this to us, that God proved himself and he has established this to our, in our hearts, believing that he exists. We hear his voice. He gives us the direction. If something is not right, he tells you. But also Satan speaks to people. But still, even if Satan speaks, God will still let you, he will send his angel to let you know it's not from him. So I'll say this as I come. You can hear, I say, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. Now we don't longer use water to wash, to cleanse, to transfer ourselves. It's the blood of Jesus. So you can see here, it is very difficult for somebody when it's dirty. I don't mean this, our clothes are dirty. Sin problem. It's very big, difficult for the person to commune with God. That's why you see when a man or woman living in sin and he tells you he's praying, or prophesying, or praying for you healing, run for your life. That's why you see we are always advised. Before you allow people to stretch their hands on you, to pray for you, try to have some little clue about their, uh, their lifestyle. Because we are living in a time where it's very dangerous. Miracles everywhere. Prophets everywhere. So, if somebody prophesying the lifestyle of that person is not clean, let me say, if a man is a womanizer, and he come and prophesy, I tell you the truth, the spirit that is dwelling in that man is not of God. It's a spirit of error. 
If example, you know you are my sisters, a pastor, or even myself, I talk to you a sister, then I ask to sleep with you, that is deliverance. If you rebuke that person, the Spirit of God cannot do anything where there is sin. I see some pastors, God forgive me to use that word, take advantage of women. And some also take advantage. God cannot use any man or woman living in sin. So anybody does not live right and is prophesying, praying for people, don't let that man, woman, lay his hand on you is bringing a problem over your life so you have heard me clear i've done my role because here you can see the bible says god told moses he should tell the children of israel tell them to satisfy themselves by then they used water this is to show us before we approach to God, we must be clean. In those days, they had to wash their clothes and wash themselves. But nowadays, through the blood of Jesus, we say no to sin. Which means, when I have a sin in my life, God will not hear me. I'm stealing everybody thinks I'm doing wrong things. Then I come and pray for you. That is not God. It's a lie. So many are operating in familiar spirit. That's why you see Jesus say this, we will know them by their fruit. But you may say, how will they know when people are far? No. Even if they are far, before a woman carry you to a particular woman or a particular man, saying it's of God. Yes, we all know we are living in a life where we are looking for solution. Please, don't rush. Even if he gives you many videos about the person, try to take more time and ask God, God, can this man, then give time. Don't rush, please. Don't rush. I say don't rush. I suffered this problem many years ago. I was led somewhere. And I don't want anybody to fall in that. That's why I thank God. It's not easy to lay a hand on my head. Praise God. Because when somebody lays his hand on you, all that he carries spiritually, he put on you. So you can see. Don't let everybody say pray for you. And when of you, you are trapped. If the pastors have big congregations and many followers, you are likely to go and lay their hand. Don't go there, my sister. Unless God direct you. So, what means that if we want to have communion with God, it is very important as individual. We should be clean. Say no to sin. That's why you see many a times when you are praying, we say, ask for mercy. Meaning, you are confessing your sins. Sin problem can be not removed only by your tears. And when we are asking God, forgive me for lying, Try not to lie again tomorrow. Don't ask God lying, lying every day to forgive you. Try to see that you are genuine. When you ask God for the particular, try to see that you don't do it again. Not like I've seen some people, I've seen them. They do things and they come and ask God. Even sometimes they say, ah, but this one I don't understand. So here this. Moses came, and Moses said, And be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. That is Exodus 19.11. Then, listen to this. Verse 12. And thou shalt set a bound unto the people around about, saying, Take heed yourself that he can... He go not up into the mount or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches it, mount shall be surely put to death. That's why you see we have to thank God for Jesus. 
We can come from everywhere with our rubbish and we say, even somebody may have just killed somebody, then you come to the church, praising the Lord. Amen. Those days, you hear this, he say we should set a bound, whereby people had a particular bound that they cannot go beyond that. I really thank God for Jesus. You know God is a terrible God to those who don't believe him. But he's a loving father. I don't love to talk about the other side of God because I know him as a loving father. But many a times we treat him with disrespect. You see here, he told Moses that he should set a bound. Which means at that time, there was a particular place, step, where they had to stop. Nobody goes beyond that, only Moses and Aaron and elders. Also, then they had a particular where they had to stop, the leaders. Also, Aaron. Then Moses approached to him. But we thank God all those things are no longer there. Because we can approach the throne of grace through the blood of the Lamb. So we should not take it for granted, the blood of Jesus. That's why you see we thank Jesus for his blood. You and I, we can approach God at any time. That's why I pray that God help you. You always confess your sin. And try not to do the same thing always. Praise God. Sin is something that separates human beings totally from God. That's why, you see, God loves us so dearly, but the sin problem brings a very big gap between us and him. For we know very well God is holy. He's holy of the holiest. So, if we want to approach him, we can only approach him through the blood of the Lamb. But I still ask us as individuals, we know ourselves better. You know yourself better. You know the things that you do which really you feel that your conscience disturbed you, disturbs you. There are things that when you do, you feel uncomfortable. Try to see that those things, you pray against them, don't give up. They are, I will say sin, I will say again, it's a spiritual thing. I have seen many times you say you don't want to do that, but you do the same. But the secret is that don't stop for praying against that particular thing that you struggle with. All the, everyone in this forum, you have an issue that you struggle with in your obedience to God. So that one may be last. When you see men, every man you look at, a very handsome man, you just feel you want him. You see a woman, you last. So what means your weakness is last? So then you start praying against it. You can come out. I have never heard somebody saying that I pray, over, please help me to pray over my weakness. This one. That one are shameful things you cannot say. But are not shameful. So you continue praying against it. Before you know it, the grace will be given to you and it will no longer become a problem. I love to say this for many years now. I pray against three things. Of which the Lord told me. Addiction which is drinking of alcohol. I never drink alcohol. But I pray against it. The Lord said to me. Pride. And immorality. I pray against them every day. But you. Such things you don't pray against them. Why? You think you have reached. It's a trap. Why pride is that tomorrow. Maybe, not maybe, when the gathering is so big in the world, everybody come to see hear God's word. Pride enter. But I have already prayed, and if you pray, please continue praying for me, because pride is something God doesn't like. Okay, immorality. Maybe the church is full of many beautiful women who don't, don't want to stay in their marriages. So you continue praying for me. I know it will not be my portion. And addiction. So I pray against those things every day. Which means you also, 
You must find things that you pray against every day. When God warns you over something, God sees the future. You know what it means. You have been a man maybe riding a bicycle. Now tomorrow you have plenty cars. You may change. Even your body may change. Even your lifestyle may change. Some of you, even the stomach will change. Praise God. So you can only stay intact if you consistently pray against them. Some of you, maybe you have come from, you have been struggling. When the life has come, now your marriage, everything is fine. Your husband, every, every, every year, he, he do for you anniversary. He do for you, he, he, how do you call it, wedding. Every year, you celebrate your wedding. Everything come. Now you change even the way you talk to people. Pride. So you pray against such things. Why? God, in those days, he had set a bound. But now that bound is not there. So we can only set it by ourselves. By the living and sin. So I pray that we pray against sin. Praise God. I don't want you to live like people. You know, um, I don't want you to see your life based on what you are today. No, that is not you. God has made me understand. I'm surrounded with great men and women. Who are they? You are the one, you are one of them. When I see you in the spirit, I don't see a woman struggling, a man struggling. No, I see somebody in comfort zone because the Lord is leading you beside the still water. Praise God. So I do believe this world will not come, to, will not just pass by. God will make sure that you are comfortable. So we are talking about how to maintain it. So that that bound is no longer there. As I come to this, listen. There shall no hand touch it, but it shall surely be stone or shot through, whether it be beast or man. It shall not live. When the trumpet sounded long, they shall come up to the mount. Jesus. You hear the bound that God had told Moses to tell them. I see, Sister Ferida, please, you... Um, Help us you mute yourself. So you can see how terrible it was those days. But nowadays we just come worker. They say, I, I don't know if it is really happening. 